Whenever the laws of any state are broken, the duly authorized organization swings into action. It may be called the state police, state troopers, militia, the rangers, or the highway patrol. These are the stories of the men whose training, skill, and courage have enforced and preserved our state laws. An important function of the highway patrol is to maintain the safety of the road to prevent accidents causing injury or death. But not all the fatalities on the highway are accidents, though they may appear to be. During harvest time, the patrol encountered an accident that started with the driver looking for a hitchhiker. Thanks. I'm just going to Collinsville. Nothing wrong here. No. No. <laughs> instantaneous. Cause of death was an occipital fracture occurring when the deceased How was... How do you spell it, Doc? O-double-C-I-P-I-T-A-L. Means the back of the head. Occurring when the deceased was... The back of the head? Maybe I'm filling out the wrong form. Doc, the guy went through the windshield. Forward. <laughs> Time to check the daily report. I'll be with you in a minute. You got something hot? Looks like a murder, only we're supposed to think it was an accident. All right, let's have it. Car hit a tree. The victim's head went straight forward into the windshield. But he died from a blow on the back of the head. We reconstructed the accident, and it would have been impossible for the victim to have received such a blow in the crash. What else? We figured he was clubbed with something heavy and blunt, maybe a tire iron, then propped behind the wheel of the car, which was crashed, about four and a half miles north of Collinsville. What's his name? We don't know. No driver's license? Yes, he had one. John Curtis. It's been erased and rewritten. It's a pretty good job, too, not quite professional. Let's find out who this guy is. Send his fingerprints to Washington for a make. Ask the lab boys if they can bring this back with the original name and number. Anything else on the body? Well, just this, an ID card from an insurance company. Urban Casualty and Life Assurance. In case of injury, notify William Ferguson. RFD, Box 43, Gardner's Grove. Patrolman Garvey thinks the victim might have been a fruit tramp. Yeah, the highways are crawling with him this time of the year. Why would anyone want to plant a phony identity on a poor fruit picker? Maybe someone wanted to lose his own identity, commit suicide, and live to tell about it. I think the guy that did this homicide is not going to do much telling. Could have murdered him for the usual reasons, revenge, jealousy. If one of those were the motives, why take the trouble to plant a false identity? It's crazy. Ever run across a killer who was normal? This could be the motive. Insurance? Yeah. 
The killer might have pulled this trick before, too. Yeah, I see what you mean. Well, I'll tell you what I want you to do. Get me a report on all vehicular fatalities that occurred in the past 12 months that have any similarity to this one. I'll get the file room on it right away. I'm going to take a run down to Gardner's Grove. RFD 43, keep me posted, will Anybody named John Curtis. How about William Ferguson? Afraid I can't help you. It's funny you'd give this address. Well, look here. Guess it's about the biggest unofficial post office in the whole state. How come? Most folks who come here have no permanent homes. What are they, migrants? Yep, fruit pickers. They gotta have some place to get the mail. It's good for your business, too, huh? Sure. Brings them in here. Good for them, good for me. Don't suppose I can remember everybody comes in here for mail. Do me a favor, will you? Take a look and see if there's anything there for Ferguson. Nope. Nothing here. I'll tell you what. If he comes in, have him call this number. Tell him I got news for him. If it is news for him. Hold on. Here he is. Matthew's here. Got a line on the car using the Curtis killing. All right, let's have it. Take this down. DMV ownership, license number 2Y7022, sold 16th of this month by A&B Used Car Company at 10213 Union Avenue, Hartsdale. That's about 30 miles from here. What was the buyer's name? John Curtis. That figures. Thanks. Let's go to Hartsdale. The A and B used car company in Hartsdale was checked out. The owner remembered the sale of the 1938 dark blue convertible, but was not able to describe the buyer. 3153. 3153, buy. 3153, what's the 1020 of 2150? 2150, buy. 2150, two fatality reports similar to the case you're on in almost every particular. Yeah, I was afraid of that. I'll 1019 in about 30 minutes. Have the reports ready on my desk when I get there. Tell them to keep digging, will you? 10-4-2150. We better find this character and fast. <laughs> Makes number five. You think it's the insurance angle? Well, we'll find out. I'm expecting Mr. Banning from the State Underwriters Association. By the way, the lab tests on the victim's clothing showed positive evidence of citric acid stains. Now it's confirmed that he was a fruit picker, just like the others. How are the boys making out in the lab with a driver's license? It's a slow process, restoring erasures, but they expect to have something soon. Good. Is Mr. Matthews in? It's Mr. Banning, Mr. Matthews. Send him right in. It's Banning. I'll stay on this. OK. Hello, Mr. Banning. Sit down, won't you? Looks like you hit it right in the button, Mr. Matthews. They all had insurance, all four of them. There's been a fifth one turned up since last time I spoke to you. They were all migratory workers, and though they were insured by different firms, they seemed to have one very important thing in common. Well, I'll bet I know what it is. All four beneficiaries had the same mailing address. Right. Same address, different names. But I'll bet my bottom dollar that all four of those beneficiaries are one and the same party. And you'd win your bet. What kind of policies were they? Life accident. Extra indemnity for death by accident on three of the four. All are what we call open policies. No medical required, no personal appearance necessary. Oh, I see. Just fill out the questionnaire and send it in with a premium. That's about it. Well, let me see if I've got this straight now. It'd be easy for a guy to take out a policy in a phony name, then arrange identification papers in that name. We'll say, like a driver's license. And his next move is to find a victim, a hitchhiker, a migratory worker. One that would answer the description on the questionnaire. 
Then he kills him in what he hopes to look like an accident. Plants a fake ID card on him, then sits back and waits for the insurance company to send the check. Is that about it? It would seem so. Of course, getting away with it is something else again. Strange that he always picks migratory workers for his victims. Well, a migratory worker has no roots. If he disappears, nobody would care very much. It's different with a guy who works in a store or an office. Mm. This just came off the wire from Washington. He was clean. The Prince or Army. The dead man's name was Ralph Perry. Last known residence was 305 South Scanlon. An address he gave when he applied for veterans' benefits a few months ago. Well, it's a lead. They make the payoff on the Curtis policy yet? The check to William Ferguson is in the mail. Good. Anything else the companies can do to help you? Yeah, I'd like photostats on the last four checks. I'll see that you get them. I'm going to pay a visit to South Scanlon Street. Put a stake out in that RFD number. Patrol. What do you want? Did you at one time have a Ralph Parry living here? Ralph? He ain't in any trouble, is he? When is the last time you saw Parry? Well, he moved out about two... No, it was about three months ago. Went back on the road when they started the crop picking again. You haven't seen him since? Well, he came visiting once a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday. To see you? I think he really came to see Carl. Who's Carl? His cousin, Carl Seward. Seward lives here? In the back room, but he's out right now, working. Where does he work? At the, uh, packing house. He ain't after Carl for anything, are you? I know he's been awful worried lately. What's he worried about? I guess maybe it was the fight that upset his nervous system. The fight? Yeah, him and Ralph. First they was a hollering to beat the cars, and then they were knocking each other all over the place. On a Sunday, too. What was it all about? It was about some insurance money. Carl Seward was the first important lead to turn up. As the landlady had said, he was at work at the packing house in an outlying suburb. You got a guy working here named Carl Seward? Please, let me go, let me go. Take it easy, take it easy. Please, let me go. Oh, I'll never do it again. Do what? I mean about the apples. What apples? The ones I sold and kept the money for. I don't know what got into me. I'm no crook. How much money did you get? Buck 85. You gonna take me in? I'll get back to that. I want to ask you some questions about Ralph Parry. Ralph? That's right. I understand you had a big fight with him. Oh, we were always fighting. You know how it is with Ken folks. You fought about insurance money. What was that all about? Oh, Ralph, he, he, uh, he wanted to borrow some money. Said he knew where he could get a good deal on a motorcycle. He's crazy about motorcycles. Me, I, I, I wouldn't give you nothing for one. Go on, go on. Well, I didn't have any money to lend him, so he got sore, that was all. What about the insurance money? Oh, well, I got a, a little life insurance. Not very much. I guess I'm not worth very much. But, well, Ralph, he wanted me to cash it in and, and lend him the money. I told him nothing doing, because I figure when a guy goes, he should leave something behind, even if it's just a little insurance money. Ralph kept insisting, hmm? Yeah. Man, did he get mad. I, I couldn't see out of this eye for a week. But maybe next time I'll get a good shot at him. There's not going to be a next time, kid. Well, we've had a big day. Chase a killer and wind up catching a guy who's been stealing apples. Yeah. It's Matthews. The lab raised the original name on the driver's license. Okay, go on, go on. Henry Willits, the Gardner's Grove address. Don't tell me. RFD 43, I bet. That's it. Okay, we'll take a run out there. Call me if anything breaks. Huh? Climb in.
Oh, hello there. How are you? Afraid that fellow Ferguson ain't shown up yet. Letter here for him, though. Let me see it, will you? Yeah. I think it's from an insurance company. Yeah, it sure is. Put it back in the fishing hole. Mm -hmm. Come here, will you? I want to show you something. See that guy there with the crop duster? Mm -hmm. That's Patrolman Peterson. If somebody comes with that letter, you get in trouble. Send for him fast. Always was one to cooperate with the law. Hey, tell me, you know a fellow by the name of Henry Willis? Hank Willis? I sure do, mister. Sooner or later, they always come around asking for Hank. What does that mean? He's a bad apple. Bad clean through. Why, a couple of years ago, he almost killed a fella. Straw boss over at Kingsley's Orange Grove. How come? They got to arguing, and Hank had this claw hammer in his hand, and, well, you can guess the rest. You hurt him bad? Sent him to the hospital with a busted shoulder. Might have killed him, only the man sidestepped just in time. Did the man file a complaint? Yep. Judge gave him about a year's time. Might have gotten off easier, except this was the second time up for Hank. What did he do this time? Maybe too much, maybe nothing. I don't know. You got any idea what part of the state Willis is working in now? Sure. He's right here. Back behind this store building is an alfalfa field. You go across it a quarter of a mile or so until you come to the grove. You'll find him there. Thanks. Be careful, though. Hank Willis is a rough, tough boy. You Hank Willis? What am I suspected of this time? Is it a million dollar stick up? Or has some desperate character been pinching nickels off the newsstand? If you're clean, Willis, you got nothing to worry about. Look, I know I'm clean, but for an ex-con to try to convince the law, that's another matter altogether. Tell me. You got a driver's license? I had one. I lost it. Did you report it lost? No, I've been too busy. Have you got a car? No, I never had a car. Looks like I'm never going to have one now, the rate I'm going. Unless I just happen to win one in a raffle sometime. Well, why bother with a driver's license? Then? Well, it was all part of the course. Besides, I want to know if I was good enough to pass the test like the school said I'd be. Driving school? Yeah. I never knew how to handle a car before. I never had a chance to learn. So last winter, I was in Capital City, and I had a few extra bucks in my kick. So you went to driving school? They use good equipment to those schools, don't they? All the latest stuff. Well, sure. They were all brand new, with all the latest gizmos. Look, you wouldn't know where you might have lost your license or who might have found it, would you? No, it must have just slipped out of my wallet. You think somebody might have stolen it from you? And leave all the money? Hey, look, why is my driver's license suddenly such a hot subject? All right, forget it, forget it. It's not important. What was the name of the driving school you went to? The Anderson School of Driving. All right, thanks. You better stick around for a few days, Willis. We'll probably want to talk to you again. Oh, sure. I'll stick around. So if you can't find anybody else to take this fall, there's always good old reliable ex-con Willis you can grab. Like I said before, if you're clean, you got nothing to worry about. But if you're not, you've bought yourself a lot of trouble. Call headquarters. Tell them to call the Anderson School of Driving. I want to check on the equipment they use, especially the car that Willis used for lessons. I'll be inside. All right. 2150 to headquarters. All right, Mrs. McLean. Goodbye. Find Hank Willis all right? I found him. Pretty tough character, eh? I've met tougher. It's a nice car you got out there. Is it yours? She will be when she's paid for. Suppose Hank Willis is the fellow you're looking for? I'll know soon enough. Here you are, Chief. Here's the information on Willis you wanted. Hope it's what you're looking for. Well, things are starting to make sense. Time to wrap it up? No, no. This tells us exactly the man we want, but it's not evidence. It won't hold up in court. So we're still with it? Yeah, I'm afraid so. Unless the pressure gets too much for our boy and he makes a break for it or tries to pick up an insurance check. Either way, we got him exactly where we want him. Think he might? I don't know. It's hard enough to predict what a normal person will do. You know something? I think they spotted Peterson. That's why they haven't picked up the check. I'm going to pull him off that stakeout. Anything I can do to help, Mr. Matthews, be very happy to. Thanks. If anybody comes with that check, let us know right away, will you? Mm. I don't get it. The only thing that info I gave you says is uh, that Willis learned to drive in a car equipped with an automatic shift. That's right, and the car used in the killings were old ones, all hand shifts. Well, that means uh, Willis isn't a killer. That's right. 
in the store just now. You said that... I said what I wanted Hutkins to hear, that's all. We know positively that Hutkins is the only man connected with the five murders. And all that in the store just now is an act, huh? That's right. Hutkins is our man, and I think he is. He's going to make his move. He's going to try and make us think Willis is the killer. Come on, let's move, Peterson. <laughs> up a little early, ain't you? Just going to town to pick up some merchandise. Two six six nine to two one five zero. Two one five zero. Two six six nine. Man answering description of Henry Willis seen getting into Hutkins' car and driving off with Hutkins. 2150 to 2669. What is your 1020? 2669. Northbound on Highway 42, a half mile north of Hutkins' store. All right, stay with him. We'll catch up to you. And let's go. There's a man's life at stake. <laughs> Send all units north to Gardner's Grove Township, south on US 42. Units south of Hutkins store are to proceed north. Intercept a green special sedan 1955, license number 2Z33201. Two men in it. Use caution. Repeat. Use caution. One of them is a killer. Two one five zero to two six six nine. We're approximately three minutes behind you. Don't lose them. Two six six nine ten four. He was trying to kill me, to keep me from telling that it was him who came after that insurance company letter. What's your story? Well, I go into the store after working, same as I do every night, to buy some cigarettes. Uh, he says he's got to drive into town after some goods. Do I want to go along? Maybe take in a movie or something. So I say, OK. We get in the car, and we're driving along. After a while, he says he thinks the front wheel is wobbling. So we pull off the road and stop, and I get out to take a look. The next thing I know, he's taken after me with a tire iron. So I fight back. Now you guys showed up. It was him trying to kill me to keep me from telling. You're lying, Hutkins. You must be crazy. No, you're crazy. Crazy enough to kill five men for their insurance. You were going to make it six because you thought with him dead, the investigation would end. Look here. I don't have to take that from you. You were going to kill Willis exactly like you killed the others. Plant the letter on him, then go back to your store and make it look like a robbery had been committed. Lady, we're going to call me and say somebody broke in and stole the letter. That is so. Nobody can provide it any of the killings. Nobody. See? Nobody. We've got enough proof. And this, too. When we check your handwriting against the endorsements on the other checks, we'll cinch it. All right, take them away.
next week's case handled by the Highway Patrol is a very exciting one. We hope you'll be with us. Until then, remember, the careless driver isn't driving his car. He's aiming it. This is Roderick Crawford saying see you next week.